Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I'm Peter, that is Tim. This is a horror movie show. We talk about horror movies every week. And on this episode, we are actually, not only are we going back to a franchise that we started in October last year, and have been working through gradually over the months, we are finishing that franchise. This is, we can scratch this one from the record. That is, we're done. Feels good. It does feel mm-hmm. good. Because this is going to be Phantasm Five Ravager. Mm. Which... Unlike the other four films in the series I hadn't seen before, this was my first viewing of this film. Interesting, interesting. So, yeah, you'll get my thoughts in a second. Uh, but yeah, so we'll start spoiler-free, as we always do, and we will give you a warning somewhere in the middle before we get into spoilers. And it's also really hot, right? It's been really hot here today. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just letting you know that if it's not on screen, I'm probably not covering it with clothes. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Ooh, Jesus. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> just below this window, mm-hmm. below, below here... <laughs> less clothes I, uh, funny enough it actually hasn't been super hot out here like so in LA so <laughs> like, oh d- don't get me wrong I'm sure July and August especially September are going to be miserable but usually mm. we've already started getting like really hot by now we had a couple of days that were like in the hundreds but those kind of went away pretty quick it's funny I, t- I, think, I, f- I feel like this, this may just be like, like phantom memories <laughs> no pun intended mm. given the movie uh, <laughs> but I feel like our hotter days are always closer to the start of the summer, and it it gets it gets kind of a bit more bearable uh, once we hit mm-hmm. August. But I mean, I don't know. I, I, that's just for yeah. I always thought it was like that back home, but I don't know. Uh, out here, um, it, it definitely increases, and then like September is just like absolute miserable. Even like the mm-hmm. early part of October can be pretty bad sometimes. But at least that's the way it's been. Like the about five ish or so years I've lived out here. Nice. So if you see the sweat dripping down my brow, uh, I'm just warning you. That's why. Uh, miserable, miserable, miserable. Uh, so, in fact, I think it's been the hottest day of the year so far today here. But hey, uh, so, uh, yeah, I've got a bit of Phantasm Ravager. Uh, they dropped the five, actually, eventually. And just the, the V in the Ravager is technically the five, but whatever. Uh, stupid naming systems. Um, it's Phantasm mm-hmm. five. So, um, I hadn't seen this before. You had seen it. You see, I, did you see this in theaters when it came out? Yeah, actually, uh, I'll, I'll go into it right now. I just wanted to talk oh. a, a little bit about my uh, experience uh, before we get into actual thoughts, because like this was like one of my like top ten like favorite uh, movie trips. Um, I went uh, at the premiere, which was at Beyond Fest, which is like my favorite festivals out here. They do really cool like um, like restored horror movies and like um cool like you know small indie titles uh so that's where like you see like a lot of like early stuff popping up um they always have like at least one or two like cool premieres and uh they were doing a double feature as a saturday at 10 o'clock it was the restored version of phantasm followed by the premiere of this and i was so hyped uh they had um like cascarelli and the guy who played like reggie came out um you know they just did like a quick little like yeah <laughs> uh, yeah they came out they did like a quick little intro and then like again like i can't stress enough how like awesome this festival is like it's just really like you know super like all about the fans and stuff like they started throwing like little plastic like balls into the crowd and they were passing around like cupcakes that were like you know phantasm like themed like you know somewhere shaped like the balls and and that kind of stuff and um i, I know i know where this is going which is why i'm loving the build up here i know <laughs> oh, and just like the you know uh the and it was just like i was so happy and excited in the mood and then the restored version of phantasm just looked so amazing and sounded amazing and it was great uh and then they played this movie which I'll just leave it at that until we kind of, you know, get into the actual meat of it. Well, uh, yeah, I, well, I, I'll lead into my opinion, uh, just t- taking that from what you just said, because I, f- I have to imagine that watching uh, the original Phantasm and then immediately watching this one gave you a sense <laughs> of whiplash. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> you just said the restored Phantasm looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Under no circumstance should you be watching the new film that was just made right after yeah. that and going, how does this look worse? How does this look <sighs> worse than the movie that was made on a lower budget in 1979 mm-hmm. or, you know, 78, whatever the, before they put it out. But, yeah. like, this 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 movie was a little bit depressing and soul-destroying of, as to how bad it was. Now, I didn't, yeah. I didn't actually know this before I watched it. I didn't know it wasn't Cascarelli who actually directed it. It was uh, David yeah. Hartman. 
Yeah, did he like did Casca really like co-write it or something it like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think you can I, you can tell in the direction that it's not the same person. You can tell it's not uh, it's tight. thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Um, it is funny because I remember thinking the trailer looked really cheap back when I first mm-hmm. saw the the trailer. You know, in twenty sixteen when this came out, and I was worried about seeing it. I was like, this doesn't look very good. I'm 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 nervous about this and. Watching it, it starts off kind of okay because you know Reggie's in the desert and it looks mm-hmm. kind of like no different than like you know three or four. It's you know some of the sections in those movies, right? And it's, except he's yeah. older, obviously, but whatever. And it was actually when he, uh, I want to yeah, not, not talk about plot or anything like yet, but eventually when he first fires a gun and the mm-hmm. CGI muzzle flash, he's not actually really? firing. They're not firing blanks. They're not doing that. They're they're, mm-hmm. they're just pretending to shoot a gun and there's like a, you know a, a, a visual effect for the muzzle. Is mm-hmm. on and it just looks so cheap and tacky. It reminds me of YouTube made movies and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And yeah, I was immediately worried. I was like, oh god, no, the rest yeah. of this. And yeah, I would say like the the whole thing feels very like sci-fi original movie. Like it, yeah, there's you know we talked before about you know with franchises and stuff like uh, when you have a movie you know, like a, a long running series of movies, there are certain things about it that like, you know, invoke the spirit of that franchise to me. And I mean, I hate to say it, the characters are here, but there's really nothing about this that feels like a Phantasm movie. Like, uh, you know, if, if you took out like the, you know, the connected plot and obviously like, you know, the characters' names and the actors and stuff, like, I this just wouldn't i wouldn't even think that this was phantasm the first 20 30 minutes kind of are because it is very sort of like just who reggie is and obviously yeah. because it's, the, it's playing to his character like the way he is being when he meets certain people it's like, okay right so this kind of feels phantasm and the problem though is that it just kind of kept going downhill after that it just kept like it didn't, wasn't great there but i was like, okay maybe this will be at least on par with oblivion after those first 20 minutes yeah and then after that it just keeps going downhill um We'll talk about what what it is in spoilers, but there's a visual effect shot uh, about an hour into the film that was embarrassing to watch. <laughs> yeah. Well, the entire screen was CGI. Mm. And, yeah, I'd say there's like, yeah, like the whole maybe last twenty-ish minutes or so, like it was just like you guys shouldn't have done this unless like i feel like it's a weird thing to say because you know a lot of times like we like smaller independent stuff and there's a lot of like great movies that have been made super cheap that you know are phenomenal yeah, but well, this that, is kind that, of... that's the thing the first movie was that the first movie was yeah. like super <laughs> dirt cheap but like amazing and i feel like they, they did this they, 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 first of all some of the ideas that led to the visual effects could have been ripped right out of this the script's not oh, yeah. there. The script is weak sauce. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know what point they're trying to make with the, the story. And it introduces this whole element in this movie uh, that we'll get to in spoilers that just... I was like, as soon as they started with this, I was like, wait, what? Why are we doing this? <laughs> and then, it, what's it implying? And then the ending and cutting it... Like, there's little moments of things to like. There's little moments of fan service. I mean, the best thing about the movie, honestly, is probably the, the score. Because it's, you know, it's the main theme... Uh, you know, redone in various you know situations. It's such a fantastic main theme, and that carries over uh, quite well. Yeah, like it's hard to be it, like it's hard to say like oh this is a complete trash movie because you know being such a big fan of the you know whole franchise and and actually going through and like I, I didn't watch three and four in a really long time and like watching them I was like you know what these are actually pretty good and then. I was a little excited to Especially watch Especially three. Because... I think I think four's, you know, kind of shaky, it, but three. It's okay, but yeah. like if I'm doing a marathon or something, like I wouldn't, you know, like get yeah. that one out of rotation. Like it's still worth watching. And so I was kind of excited to watch this thing because like I was like, I, I hadn't seen it since I saw it in theaters. And then I was like, I don't know, maybe given a little time and after watching the other ones more recently, maybe I'll have a little more fondness for it. But yeah, I mean, the only little bits of joy that you get out of it is just like well i like these characters so i guess i kind of like seeing them even though some of them like look super old and it's kind of sad um yeah it, but, it's like, saying something when mike who was the kid in the first one like looks this old and obviously that's just he time. looks like as old as reggie like he does yeah he's at least <laughs> younger which is funny because I'm, I'm sure reggie I don't, I don't know what age he was when they did the first one but i imagine he was in his 20s um yeah, you know so what? so the age gap's not actually that big 
Yeah, you know what? It actually reminds me of something that I just watched recently. Uh, I don't know if you watched it yet, but the newest season of Arrested Development. Not as of yet, no. But yeah, like, uh, spoiler alert: it is pretty bad, and is one of those things. Yeah, and it's just one of those things where you're watching it. Like everyone just looks so much older than you remember. They look kind of tired, and it's like, why are you doing this? Like, and it doesn't feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like, oh, this is like a organic. Yeah. yeah, like it, like it doesn't feel like this is what should ha- be happening with the story. It feels like a fan is like forcing this and making <laughs> this happen. Yeah, no, I get because obviously there's the opposite. There's times when it can work. Like I, I, I always often yeah. hold up uh, uh, the the twenty the two the two thousand eight Rambo Twin Peaks. is oh, oh Twin Peaks. <laughs> sorry, the, Twin Peaks is a great example. Yeah. Uh, but I was just, my mind went to Rambo. Right, that's a Rambo's great. Good, yeah. Rambo's a great action movie, and you can tell Stallone was really into doing it. Um, even Rocky, actually, Balboa and Creed were both yeah. good. Creed may arguably be the best one of the franchise. Um, and Twin Peaks is a fantastic example of they had more story to tell, they were passionate about it, and you know, you can critique that final season of Twin Peaks if you want, if you think it's too weird, you think it you know betrays what the original was, but you cannot tell me that there was not 100% heart and passion that went into that. It, it, it doesn't exist because Lynch and Co. and Frost didn't mm-hmm. want to make this and make it the best it could be, and the fact that Coscarelli's not even directing this, like, just sends me this weird signal of, like, his heart wasn't yeah. in it. Yeah, like, uh, that's, like, uh, obviously, like, you know, who knows what went behind the scenes, but, like, I don't know, this feels like, you know, everything had so much of his, like, stamp on it that, I don't know, this feels like, I, I'm sure he wanted to do another one, I'm sure fans wanted another one, but, I, I don't know, like, I feel like this is more of, david hartman and i don't know if he's maybe pushing for more stuff and maybe integrating some of these bigger ideas or something that don't feel very phantasmy that i mean my, my biggest thing here is that i mean I, I don't even hate the ideas that it presents necessarily they just don't have sure. the budget to actually do them properly yeah um, they're really ambitious and it unfortunately just doesn't pull it off and ambition is great but i, th- I think one of, all the best low budget movies of all time Mm-hmm. They t- they take the limitations, the limitations they have, and they use that to their advantage and say, "What can we do on this?" The, the example I always go back to, actually, this wasn't like a big successful low budget movie, but Christopher Nolan's first movie, uh, Following, right? He basically mm-hmm. did that. Uh, like, I, I don't know if he just finished like film school or whatever, but this was like you know film student levels of budget, right? Mm-hmm. And there's like a villain in it, and there's like, maybe like a gangster, and they made this call where it's like, okay, it makes sense that you'd have a gun but we don't have the budget to get a gun and make it look good. So instead, we're going to use a hammer. And the That's scene good. with the, the the hammer is like mm-hmm. so brutal because it's a hammer. <laughs> and it made the scene better and scarier. And it's like, you know what? If you can't do it properly, don't do it. Think of something else. Think, think of something else that will have yeah. the same effect, that will make the same dramatic point that you want to make. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, that this has like, you know... and. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's just like, a, you know, not just this movie, but movies in general, I think it... It kind of sucks nowadays that I feel like people don't get that as much because it's like, well, instead of being like, all right, how do we work around this or find ways to do it or make it look cool? And then people are just like, well, we'll just do it with computers. Which uh, is like, fine oh, if you've got. It's fine if you've got the hundreds of millions to yeah. make the CG look, you know, like, look, like I don't know, pick, pick a good movie with CGI, <laughs> like you know, whatever, like to yeah. make it like have the the impact that say. Uh, Avatar or something. Yeah, Avatar or whatever. Pick, yeah. pick, pick a heavy, big budget movie. Or, or even... Any, and that's why I'm impressed when something like District 9, which is a relatively mm-hmm. really low-budget movie, has as good CG as it does. It's like, oh no, they yeah. clearly like, budgeted and worked out how to accomplish this. It was actually... This past season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it was, mm-hmm. it was, you could tell they slashed the budget because most of the season took place like inside the, like, the same building, right? For a lot of it. <laughs> it was still really good. It was well written and I liked the season a lot, but... Uh, in the there's some in the premiere, but in the finale, there's like a scene where we're actually in this the city of Chicago, and there's this giant spaceship, and it's like crashing into buildings, and oh. it looks like it's out of like a two hundred million dollar movie. And wow. basically, you can tell they save money all season mm-hmm. so that that one <laughs> moment wouldn't look cheap. They wanted that yeah. one moment to look fantastic, and nice. it's like, okay, you know what? You could argue maybe they did it too much, <laughs> but yeah. I respect the choice because that moment does looks it's jaw dropping. It's, yeah. For TV, that was a jaw-droppingly good moment. And I feel like here, it's like, no, 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 we'll just have this shitty CG. And no one, there is no one behind the camera who must have thought that looked good. Like, there's no yeah. one. I don't know how you look at some of those scenes and think, ah, oh, that looks fine. <sighs> it yeah, it's it's real. 
shame. <laughs> be inventive, be whatever. And I'm not someone... Because obviously, again, if the script was there, I'd say this is a bit of a, a disappointment that the CG is bad, but I wouldn't say it mm. killed the movie. The problem is, is that the script's not there either. And the movie's kind of a mess and the pacing is really yeah. weird and it jumps around a lot. And it's a really weird thing. There's not a lot of tall man. Now, of course, uh, Angry Scrim did die before the movie even mm-hmm. came out. There's a couple of really obvious scenes where you can tell they've like CG his face onto like a, a double yeah. or something like that. So I can't fault that. Like I'm not really going to criticize him for that. Sure. But I, I guess what I'm saying is, I think it was just too late. They shouldn't have made yeah. it. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is something I've, I've been saying a lot. Like again, it goes back to you know, this last season of Arrested Development, and we see this all the time now where if something gets canceled, like, just let it go. Like, I- I'm sick of, you know, every- everything feels like so greedy now where it's like, no, I like this show, I like this movie, so I need 50,000 of them. It's like, no, like, you know, because if you wait, like, longer than, like, you know, what, like, five years or so, it's just, it's not going to be good. Like, you know, there's very, sure there are the few examples where it is good, like Ash versus Evil Dead rules, Twin Peaks rules, but those are like, you know, the kind of the outliers. Like most of the time it's like, just let stuff die. Just be happy with the ones that we got. Yeah. I I think it's give and take. I think there's some things that lend themselves to continuing Mm -hmm. and there's some stuff that it just feels forced to bring back. Having Arrested Development back sounded great until they did it. And it felt like it just changed so much. Uh, from what the original show was, um, like but- like if this was Friday the Thirteenth, like that's not something like that, you know. Like I, I think that's something you could pretty much do to like, you know, Infinity, yeah, because <laughs> it's like it, it's such a simple concept and it's always new characters. Like, and we don't we don't go into Friday the Thirteenth with this like, oh, it has to like be this good. Like, most yeah. of them aren't actually good movies necessarily. Like, yeah. they're, they're playing to a B movie crowd, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, like, but there's other things like because I remember you. I remember you having like this this opinion when I mentioned the expanse got saved, and I got really upset at you for this opinion because I'm like, no, 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 that's getting more story. That's getting more books to do, and you know, and obviously it just. Got, I mean, this, the season finale was last night of season three, and it's already been saved before the season ended. So, so that's just a yeah, cycle. Like, it's just going forward. Sure. Yeah. Like, like you know, that stuff's fine. Like, if something gets cancelled, then it gets picked up like right away. Like, yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Another example. Yeah, like, yeah, like, that's good. Especially and, uh, in these cases where they were planning the next season already. And it's like, they were already working on it. Like, it's just... Yeah, like, exactly. Like, stuff like that. That like, you know, like, sure, that's fine. Like, if you already have ideas and, like, it, it's getting picked up right away and it's, like, all the same people working on it and it's, it feels like it's not going to, like, miss a beat. Like, I'm okay with that. It's this kind of stuff that, like, you know, gets in limbo for, like, 10, 15 years. But, like, you know, nerds on the internet won't shut up about it it's like at some point it's like just just drop it yeah i mean like, i'm well documented saying star wars should have ended in, in 1983 and <laughs> everything since then i mean even though i kind of like force awakens mm-hmm. like everything since, since then could just be jettisoned and it's okay it's, it finished the story finished we're fine <laughs> i i mean I love Star Wars, but I wouldn't necessarily like 100% disagree with you. Like, I like having more movies, but I don't know how long that will last. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, um, like, I definitely, at the very least, I don't think we should get them every year. Like, it already mm-hmm. is starting to feel less and less special. Um, and you're never going to, you'll, you'll take Serenity from my cold dead hands. I'll say that as well. But again, <laughs> story to finish. Um, I mean, I, I would definitely check it out if it came back, but like, it, it just feels like. Uh, I, uh, I oh sure! Know, like, I, how, I was just I was just, it, ar- it I was be. arguing that Serenity was a good example of it. Oh, oh the movie itself. Yeah, oh, the yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Firefly, oh, of course, ended, and then Serenity was the movie. Yeah, like if they decide, like if they announce, like all of a sudden, hey, we're doing a new season of Firefly, I'd be like, uh, I'd I'd it, be interested, but I'd be really skeptical about I, the quality. I think the, I think the big thing that separates, all on the fact that clearly Lynch and Co had great ideas for Twin Peaks. I think the big thing that separates it is that it took the time difference into account and they said, okay, it's been 25 years, how have people advanced this, address the fact that they're older. I feel like a lot of these things that come back, they try to ignore the fact that the actors are like, you know, I mean, this included Phantasm V. I feel like there's like one or two jokes about them looking old, but honestly, it kind of just plays out as if it would have like 20 years ago. Yeah. And like also like with, you know, like Twin Peaks, like I almost feel like it's not even really like, that twin peaksy like it feels more like just like a weird like david lynch universe kind of show like oh, almost yeah but it pissed like, off some people but for me i was <laughs> you know, I, I was i was deep into that 
you know, like I was gonna say, if they are gonna do, you know, if they were gonna do another Phantasm movie, like maybe like. Uh, you know, introduce thought, some new characters or something, yeah. have like a new main character, like still have maybe the old guys like in the background or as side characters, but like... It'd have to be a reboot, I think. I, honestly, after yeah. this movie, I would even think I'd want the characters back. I feel like this is yeah. a send-off, as shitty as it was. If you're going to do... It, 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 you don't need to do more. I don't want more. But if you're going to do another one, I feel like it has to be a fresh start and has to be... Yeah. Take, take the concept which, and run with it. But not that we need which, that. Yeah. And normally I would be against that, except for the fact that we've been seeing some trailers for like reboots and remakes and like sequels and stuff lately that have looked really good. And it's like, well, I mean, if they did get like someone good to work on it, yeah, I think that idea. Well, obviously, if you go way back, the things I suppose the first big example of a great remake, oh, sure, or, or even yeah. a, I'd argue, uh, Herzog's Nosferatu, but um, mm -hmm. out of like the, the the modern era, I think Evil Dead's reboot was the one that went, hey, these can be good. Because like, that was really good. Yeah. It, it, didn't, you know, it didn't do Ash again. It just, you know, you know, it was like, here's a concept. There's something different with it, but it feels like it's sort of in the tone of uh, Evil Dead, but not exactly like Evil Dead 2. More more like a mix of Evil Dead 1 and 2. And, you know, it, 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 that is one thing. Yeah, like, I, and I feel like, you know, uh, Phantasm has, like, a very, you know, like, the first one has, like, a, a very dreamy kind of cerebral quality to it. So yeah. find someone that, you know, can work good with that style. Oh, and Honestly, Tim, the only thing I think you have to actually bring back is the main theme. Yeah, that, that would be good. Just bring back the main theme. Right. Um, it doesn't have to be a tall man. But, you know, pick a different, like, so, <laughs> you know, as if um, whatever's, like, you know, making these, like, sort of, not warriors, but like these these you know these tall men who go around and do all this in the towns like have you know maybe like they have different types and maybe like we'll, we'll follow this new version you know sure yeah they'll be able to the small women i don't know <laughs> a small woman I'd, yeah i'd be i'd be interested i'm not sure <laughs> little four foot five women just, just you know no, no i mean i say small I'm, I'm not talking dwarf small i'm just like you know as small yeah. as you know within regular range and i would yeah i i would love uh I, I would love if they did that just for the uh, the fan outrage alone, the uh, oh God, yeah. the like uh, constitution that gets written by the fans to remake the movie before it even comes out. Tim is <laughs> of course referencing a certain document that was made by a group of Star Wars fans who are upset yeah. with the direction of the franchise at the moment. Um, ridiculous is all I'm saying. Ridiculous. Hey, uh, here's an idea. If you're not uh, super happy with it, why don't you go make your own thing? Like. Uh, it's just don't so support annoying. it. Just don't stop, stop. Stop. Stop buying tickets. Stop going to see it. Yeah. Right? I love the. I don't know if you saw the video, but like, I, I think I saw someone on Facebook share a video of like a guy that went out and bought like a Ray action figure just so he could make a video of him like opening it oh, up God, and like yeah. snapping it in half. But it's like he still bought it. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they still get your money. Like yeah. this is working. <laughs> if anything, they'll just want to make you angry now, just so you'll keep buying things so you can burn them. Yeah. <laughs> and if anything, you're buying stuff and then making them more rare so they can jack up the price. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're helping them out here. Uh, Ooh, last Jedi sales have gone through the roof. Like, what are people doing? Like, <laughs> people are throwing their discs in the yeah. toilet. Yeah. Still paying them money, though. I just bought the ultimate six dicks or six, six dicks. dicks? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tim, what, what collector's edition are you looking at? <laughs> If uh, if they release a six dick uh, collector's <laughs> edition, I would very gladly buy it. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I, I believe they did that with a Ramstein album. It came with a like, <laughs> it, it came with like uh, dildos, which were all modelled after the band members' penises, penai, oh. whatever, oh. Oh, close pieces, dicks, mm. the dicks, <laughs> right? Mm. Uh, so they moulded, they put their dicks in moulds, and then made the moulds, and then made the dildos out of the moulds. So. <laughs> It came with the five. I don't know how many members there are. Five or six of 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 the members that you got. I'm sure. I'm sure that was a thing. I, I, oh. if, if, if it wasn't a collector's edition for an album, it was just something you could buy on their store. It was a, a set of dildos or something. I don't know. Do host indeed. <laughs> um, oh man. Uh, so uh, fantastic. I mean, five. <laughs> We haven't even like talked about the plot yet. Well, because that's spoilers. <laughs> we were saved up for spoilers. Like I guess, okay. you know, I, I I think it led to a discussion about things coming back when they maybe shouldn't. Yeah. If if it's not for the right reasons and if it's not for, because I, I mean I think there's a, a a a franchise problem in Hollywood where everything has to be a sequel or a remake or whatever. Oh sure. And yeah. we don't need you know installments of everything. And of course, of course, it's very subjective. Like you know, I I could have Friday the Thirteenth, you know, you know, I, you see, I, to infinity. 
Yeah. But there's other things where like, no, just just let like Star Wars die. Just let um you know, Lord of the Rings be done. Stop doing more Lord of the Rings things. It's fine. Just leave it. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, it, it's weird because yeah, like there there is some stuff where you know, I am guilty of being like, well, this sucks, but I guess I'm like, you know, glad that it exists as opposed to you know, we have nothing, but like Yeah. Yeah, I mean this this is a this is a rare one where it's like yeah, we kind of would have been totally fine if they never made this movie. As, as much as I love Phantasm, as I'm pretty ride or die for those first four movies, and like the the first one alone, like yeah, when we did our top 100, that was like easily in my top 10. I forget, it might have even been in my top five, but I, I really love that movie. Yeah, this it, just... it was, yeah, it was high in main as well. It was pretty high. Uh, uh, so I yeah, it's, it's just a shame. Um, yeah, so I, I guess we'll give the, the spoiler warning and we'll, we'll get into spoilers then. Well, I suppose we begin with the fact that after about 20 minutes, right, you have your intro uh, with mm-hmm. the really bad acting of the, the guy in the car, which, by the way, so Reggie left his car in the desert. He's, it mm-hmm. implies that he's just gotten back from the hell because it ended four going into hell. It implies mm-hmm. that he's just gotten back from there. He's wandering around. He's, his clothes are all tattered. And he hitchhikes, essentially, with this guy but he, it's the same car as his, and it basically it turns out this guy who stole his car just happened to be driving here after he came back. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, which just, it just rubbed me the wrong way. It was kind of stupid, but whatever. Uh, like, everything about it feels, like, super awkward, too. Like, Reggie has, like, some, like, cool lines, but the other dude in the car, he, I'm sorry, but he's really not a good actor. Oh, and, like, and everything feels like it lingers too long, like... You know, they're having this back and forth, so it should be, like, kind of a quick, like, you know, witty, like, boom, 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 like, you know, hey, cool car, where'd you get it? Oh, blah, blah, you know, he used to have a car like this, but instead, everything just feels, like, so long. It's like, yeah, he used to have a car like this, and then I just look at him, like, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, like, it's like, oh, come on, speed this up. I know. I, I, so, it, go, it goes into an idea that I kind of like, though. I like the idea of Phantasm Balls chasing a car. That's actually kind of funny. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, I like that as a concept. <laughs> They look a little bit cheap because it's CG now instead of like actual balls flying around, so that kind of sucks. Uh, yeah. Which is probably why you didn't get a whole lot of them outside in the original movies because it was harder to do outside. I mean, uh, to be fair though, I mean that's it's probably like the least of the bad CG. Oh, it is not absolutely. It, it's actually like, forgivable this this stuff. Uh, yeah. But like I say, when he's shooting the gun, I'm like, oh god, those gunshots look bad. But so you know the whole thing, and you know, he, he runs out of the car, and it leads to the title screen. And then Reggie meets a woman whose, you know, car's broke down. I feel like we did this exact same scene in the last movie. And yep. <laughs> uh, she, now, of course, the, the, the thing now is that, you know, she's like, you know, maybe 30 years old, right? Yeah. And he's like 60. <laughs> and he's still like yeah. making 40 comments and he's still going for it. And she's like, no, nah, Reggie, you know, it's fine. You, you know, just you stay mm-hmm. down here. And he tries to like, and the joke here is that she actually ends up changing her mind and comes back downstairs to talk to him, you know, implying that she may actually want to have sex with this 60 year old man. And he's fallen asleep on the couch because he's old now, which... Yeah, it, it, like, I don't, I don't know, it kind of, like, yeah, it, uh, I hate to say it, like, I mean, I love Reggie and everything, but, yeah, it just feels weird, like, seeing him so old and still acting like this. Like, I, I love in, uh, like, Ash vs. Evil Dead that they kind of, like, took away, like, a little bit of, like, his horniness. Like, he was still, like, a horn dog, but he wasn't, like, hitting on, like... You know, no, like the he, young girls and he would, stuff. He and... would hit on ladies who were more to his age range, right? Yeah. You know, and I think that's when I, when I was saying earlier about like things coming back is they like to try and ignore the fact that they've aged so much. This felt yeah. like that. This felt like we're going to ignore it, except for the fact that he fell asleep, which I did think was a nice little joke. It was like, oh, she I mean, was going to have sex with him, but he's asleep in the couch because he's an old man and he fell asleep. Like, okay, that that is that's kind of funny, uh, but it, it, it it's just kind of a problem with. I just it feels like they're mostly ignoring like the age difference, and um, mm-hmm. so. He goes to sleep. I think this is when it cuts to where I started like being like, "What? What are we doing?" And it cuts to like Reggie at like a mental hospital, mm-hmm. and uh, Mike's there to visit him, and he's he's delusional. You know, Reggie's delusional, and he's like, "No, no, no! The tall man's after us! Like, we got to do this! We got to do that!" And it's it's the whole thing. And I was like, "Are we really doing this? Are we, are we really going to like try and claim that this entire franchise has been inside his head?" And that's all it's Ugh. ever been. Like that. That's really annoying. Yeah. At least on face value, because there are versions of this story that I do kind of like if they're done well. There's an episode of Buffy, the head television show, Buffy the Vampire yeah. Slayer. 
that does this concept where it questions if the, the entire show's been inside Buffy's head. And it's a really good episode, actually. It's like mm-hmm. a really good episode, and it ends in this really ambiguous way. Of course, that's a TV show, so we know we're coming back next episode, it's going to be fine. But... <laughs> It's kind of funny because I, I was actually thinking about that when we watched uh, another movie we reviewed recently, Unsane, but mm. I, I forgot to bring it up. But uh, I mean, it's something that, you know, they do, um, you know, especially like, you know, I've seen it in like comics and stuff before where you have the character in a mental hospital and you don't know if it's like, oh, has it all been a dream or whatever? And it can it can be done well, but yeah, and here it's not the best. I'm like, especially since it's kind of like a new thing, like you've had the stuff with the um like you've had a lot of like weird dream stuff and you had stuff with like uh you know the the tall man's planet and everything but you never really had like you know alternate parallel realities or whatever which is this. what we get to later on because we, we, we get this one point we get a theory that there's multiple universes stacked on top of one another and they're yeah. leaning into each other implying that this one with Reggie is real, but so is the Phantasm universe, and so is this post-apocalyptic version of the universe, yeah. which we get to later. Uh, and they're all kind of intermingling with each other, and it's kind of, and it's, I don't know, the whole thing is, because the ending kind of plays like it could have just been all in his head, and like, it's kind mm-hmm. of ambiguous, except for the fact that there's a, a post-credit, or a mid-credit scene, which we'll get to. Um, but, it, yeah, it's, it's really murky. It doesn't feel really well thought out. One of my big problems as well, especially in these scenes, but this was something that I felt a lot throughout the movie, this is another budget thing, is I kept feeling like there was lots of scenes where it it was oddly absent of extras. Like, they didn't have any extras, so... Sure, yeah. Or the first scene with Reggie and Mike uh, outside at the bench or whatever, like, there was no one else around at all. And that's not necessarily that weird, but it got to this point where I, I was almost feeling, again, like, you know, m- having made student films in the past where you can't afford extras, so you just have to kind of, like, no, there's never anyone else around. Just It just happens to be empty. And yeah. I feel like the movie did that so often that, I don't know, there was just this, it was an extra layer to the cheap feeling of the whole thing, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I, I think I caught on that right away, but now that you mention it, yeah, that is kind of weird, like, especially when it's like, oh, like, yeah, if you're in a you know, mental facility or hospital or, or whatever, like, you know, there's going to be other people walking around, like, yeah. you, you know, you, you sh- like, you should see, like, some nurses or, you know, just people strolling in the background or in something. Fact, I mentioned Buffy earlier. Uh, I could be wrong here, but this, the building that's made of the hospital, I think that's actually the same uh, hospital from season two of Buffy. Oh, okay. The building, like, um, uh, you see it especially in the episode Killed by Death, and I think you see it maybe mm-hmm. the exterior once or twice in other episodes, but... Uh, it looks very similar if it's not the same. I mean, I, I could just be making this up. I could be imagining it, but it looks pretty similar to me. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think they, you know, both film yeah. usually here in, like, Southern California, so... And it's just like um, like how the, her old high school in the flashbacks in season two, uh, the, the high school in Los Angeles is actually the clock tower from Back to the Future, uh, oh, yeah. which, is, which is one you can catch. Um, yeah, cool. But, uh, yeah. But, hey, so... So you've got this thing where it's jumping between like this reality and that, and this is where the movie starts to get really hard to follow. Like, I, I can't tell you what happens in order because it's jumping around so much. I uh, I had trouble like kind of following it, and I didn't know if the movie was purposely confusing or just kind of boring that it was hard to pay attention. I, I think I think it's boring. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> I, I think it's going for the the intentional like confusion. Oh, it's the mystery. What's going on? Yeah. It's going for that like almost David Lynch esque. Oh, we're going to like this is all going to tie in later on but it, it just felt really murky to me um and at one point like reggie like there's a couple of random scenes you know because the, the girl gets killed dawn and then um like, the guy who works out in the, the 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 stable gets killed yeah she has like a she's kind of like on like a farm and yeah. she has like a, a helper i forget it's like something like a german or russian name or something yeah uh, and then he, he literally, <laughs> reggie literally wanders in the forest for a bit like a forest road <laughs> and then eventually the tall man appears and we get like the tall man's like, "Hey, look, I'm I'm sick of you like chasing me. How about we make a deal? And I'll, I'll like give you your family back, you know, your wife and daughters, and you just let me like finish my work. It's fine. Can we do that?" See, this kind of upset me because, like, in the other movies, I love that the tall man like just like had absolutely no respect for Reggie. Like, he always thought he was like a buffoon, like a like you know, someone that he wasn't even worthy of talking to, and now he's, like, making deals with them? Like, he's important or something? Yeah. It, like, no, like, the tall man should be, like, oh, you still? Like, you insignificant gnat? Like, yo, get the fuck out of here. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't like that he's, like, hey, like, let's talk. 
Yeah, it, it was weird. And this is like one of his only scenes because there's a scene in the hospital where like, you know, the human version of the tall man's like there as well. He's sick. Uh, and Reggie's freaking out about him. And, you know, it, it calls back to the whole, um, you know, the, 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 the origin story we got in Oblivion where we found out he was yeah. this, this inventor dude uh, back in the day. Like um, Jebediah, Jebediah or something. Uh, Jebediah, that sounds right. Like that. Uh, but he, like, so this is like one of like three big scenes that the tall man has. Like, that's really it. And all he really does, outside of the scene where he talks to Reggie, and then the other one he's in the hospital bed, is all he ever really does is just stand there, right? <laughs> and I also thought it was really notable that later on we're in the post-apocalyptic world with the giant balls in the sky. And again, <laughs> I don't even hate the idea of a giant ball in the sky. I actually think that's a cool visual, and like that's something I you could work with potentially that was like one of the things when i first saw the trailer like i like i agree when i saw it it, it did look cheap but seeing the big ball in the sky and stuff like i still got kind of excited like all right yeah. like, this might be kind of cool but yeah no, unfortunately that's uh, again something that just like they barely do anything with it yeah um but yes and later late on so when, he, when he's they're at the standoff and it's, it's, it's that's the thing. So Don dies early on, but then the post-apocalyptic version of the world where makes like a resistance leader and Don's like one of his soldiers. Like they brought her back and he's like, okay, okay, she's back in this world. That's cool. And she ends up just getting her neck snapped like by the bad guys, like yeah. in a bit of a standoff. I just kind of feel like they were just like, okay, I felt like you wanted her to be cool, but you gave her literally nothing to do and then killed her off like she was yeah. nothing. It was just, I don't know. It felt weird to and me. Th like th this whole like last little bit where all of a the sudden they're in this like you know video game hellscape and there's like resistance fighters fighting the tall man and the dwarves and stuff it's like so like how did it how did we get to this like this is so far from what i think of as a phantasm movie that it's like insane like and, well here's the thing right at first it kind of worked in concept for me because mm -hmm. We've been going back and forth between what we think of as Phantasm, the world, and the, the mental hospital. Eventually, he wakes up, and he's on this table, and he's got this device around his head, right? And that's when he's in the post-apocalyptic world. And I thought, at this point, okay, so everything up until now, everything since he jumped in that hell portal has been an illusion. It's been a phantasm, right? Because you know, okay. as much as this is called Phantasm, it's not, we've not really done it that much since the first movie, where there's been like an illusion of some kind, right? Okay, uh, okay so like, okay so everything's been fake everything there's been fake and like this is him finally waking up in the real world and since he's been asleep the past 20 years uh this is what's happened in the world right as okay. okay i mean that doesn't necessarily mean the rest is going to be good but the 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 transition i thought was okay except okay. for the fact that the pacing was weird with it but then mm -hmm. after a while it starts jumping around everything again it's like it's jumping mm -hmm. from this world to the mental hospital to the, the original phantasm <laughs> world to, it's just it's bouncing around all of them and i'm like what's happening and the only thing we've got to go on is at one point mike is like well i did some research and there's like all, all these universes that are all stacked on top of one another and sometimes they touch and then they they, they, they get weird and I, oh, I think that's why. what he's trying to go for i guess um so, uh, it's just like why introduce this like so late in the series so late in the movie like it's it's not needed <laughs> yeah especially since like the ending still kind of plays to me like it could have been just telling us oh no maybe this was just on reggie's head and like yeah. this was him dying him getting in the car and you know uh, jody's there as well and makes there so it's, it's the three oh, yeah, you know yeah. main characters like this is them raiding off into the sunset this is the fantasy he's got as he's dying because this is what will make him happy. Or or maybe it's literally mm -hmm. just the afterlife. And like, you know, he wanted to feel important. He wanted to be this badass. Um, mm -hmm. And instead he's, you know, so that's what he imagines. He imagines, oh, we're these warriors who hunt the tall man. So that's what yeah. we're going to do in like heaven or whatever. Well, you know, when we're mm -hmm. done. So, I mean, it could have worked like that, but of course there's a mid-credit sequence which really just murkies it up more. And they bring back Rocky from the... Because I actually <laughs> guessed who it was, even though it looks, she looks way different because it's been 20 years. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I guess who it was, and I'm like, oh shit, they brought back Rocky. This is almost trying to do that that Child's Play thing, mm -hmm. where the last couple of movies have brought him back oh, yeah. someone at the end. Yeah, I... Uh, I just said brought him. That's I, not a word. I apologize for that. Go on. I, I think I saw this scene in theaters, but I didn't watch it this time. I just... I, as soon as the credits hit, <laughs> I was kind of like, I'm done. Uh, I mean, that's... I mean, I, I was just letting the music play. I like the music. And then yeah. the scene came up. I was like, oh, okay, we've got a scene. Uh... So yeah, the embarrassing shot is when they come out of the hospital after Reggie's woken up in the post-apocalyptic mm. world and he, he runs into Mike and mm. Mike takes off the scarf and because all the goggles on the scarf so to cover their faces and he's like, oh, mm. nice to see you, brother, and uh, all happy. <laughs> it's when they leave and we get this big shot going down the street of the like the, all the fire and the mm. chaos and various other like resistance soldiers like shooting bad mm. guys 
and it's the most embarrassing looking shot I've seen in a movie in a long time. It is absolutely god awful. It, it feels like the opening sequence of like Doom, but like the like original Doom, like nineteen ninety four yeah, like it, graphics. It, it feels like a cutscene from a PS one game or yeah. something like that. That's what it, that is legitimately what it feels like, um, and not the end game graphics. Just like that, that's what a CGI cutscene would look like at the time. Yeah, like it, which, oh man, like I, I still have nostalgia sometimes. Like when I go back and like I play like a game, and yeah, you have something like you know Resident Evil Two or, or somewhere. You have the that opening scene, and you're like, at the time, you're like, man, this looks so good. And then you watch it, and it's just like, ooh, how far we've come. Remake, baby, remake is coming. Oh, can't wait. It's coming. <laughs> but hey, I, yeah, I, I like. Obviously, there was a lot of bad effects up to this point, and it looked overall quite cheap. It was when it hit that, though, where I just looked sank. I was like, why are you doing this? And then like, the entire standoff later, when they're at this, like, cliff, and the tall man's got Dawn, and they're like, trying to negotiate with him, and they've got, like, a little guy, the dwarf character who... Uh, Chunk, I think his name was. Is that his name? Uh, he he like, actually, so. like, d- disguises himself as one of the little druid dudes, uh, so he can, like, stab mm-hmm. <laughs> like, the bad guys. Which was, okay, it's yeah. a fun idea, but, like, this entire thing, again, plays out and green screen and it looks awful like it just oh, yeah. looks it looks like, like some... a youtuber's green screen you know you know like a youtube <laughs> like a youtube video will have like a bit of funny green screen and it's, it's, it's really fake mm-hmm. but it's okay because it's just maybe like a skit yeah it's maybe like a stupid little <laughs> comedy but it looks like that it, it's really oh, yeah. bad I, I was half expecting angry joey like you know jump out and scream <laughs> and like yeah when he's like slicing up like the other dwarves and stuff in the like there's just this really fake yellow blood and then mm. Also, it's kind of like, uh, you know, he ends up sacrificing himself by, like, uh, blowing himself up. And I, I feel like you're kind of supposed to, like, maybe have some sort Fair. of emotional reaction to it. But it's like, we just met this guy, like, 10, 15 minutes ago. And like and, 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 all, and all he's done is he's been the little smart ass who doesn't like that they're, they're dragging Reggie around. Though that's his entire character. There's no characterization. Yeah. There's no characterization for Don either. Um, and it's like... That, like it's him and donna are like you know they're, they're kind of like a pair like they show up together and it's like all right so if we have this you know one character that's from the other dimension or world or whatever like uh why not have like chunk like appear somewhere like you know like you could have had him as like an orderly in the hospital or, or something just to show like oh no see like these worlds are connected and like or, or something like that it's weird to just introduce this character out of nowhere and then yeah i feel like they are trying to instantly make him like Oh, he's a wisecracking badass, but then also be like, oh, he's gonna like sacrifice himself in a little bit, and it's like, I don't know, like, what are you doing with this guy? I feel like if you wanted to do the post-apocalyptic thing, and again, I would have toned it down so you weren't doing these big ridiculous CG effects. But if you wanted to make that work and make us care about Don and make him care about Chunk, I think you have to like start the movie here and like yeah. build them up over the course of the movie. I think you have to do that. I because I don't care about any of them. It's, the ending is. It, really it rough. feels so tacked on, like they it's already a short movie i think it was like about like 85 minutes or yeah. so and it, it has no momentum it just kind of ends like see see yeah. the point where like Re- reggie's outside the hospital and the little portal appears and it's like it's like war version of mike and he's like come on let's get in the car and go fight bad guys mm-hmm. like that just kind of happens at that point like I, I didn't feel like it was building up to it. i didn't feel like i was like getting to this big emotional end yeah. of an arc or like it just kind of ends it just kind of like decides that now it's time to end there's been very little victory yeah. for the for the good guys and I don't know. I think this movie's a mess. I, I think it's a mess, pretty much from start to finish. Yeah. No. I. I mean. I. I hate to say it. Because, uh, I just love all the other movies so much. But I mean, I can't disagree with that. It is just so like, like I don't know why this is here. I don't. I don't know who it's for. Because I can't imagine if you're a hardcore Phantasm fan, like. I can't imagine it's doing much for you. Again, other than, you know, the... I like it because I just like seeing these characters. Like, okay, maybe that'll do it for you, but... I, I, uh, I think the risk, though, is that after a couple of times with the character, after a couple of scenes with the characters, you kind of, like... It starts to turn because of it, because you start yeah. to get annoyed that they're, they're being dragged through this mud. As, a, as opposed oh, to, like, sure, yeah. you're happy to see them at first, but then as it gets worse and worse, you like... No, no, this is Sully in the memory of these characters, and it, it's, it's it's really upsetting. And it's it's funny to me because I feel like you know you get your hardcore Star Wars fans who who feel this way about Last Jedi, and they're like, oh no, <laughs> this rude Star Wars, the betrayed look and the betrayed Leia, and and it's like I feel like 
okay, you may not like what they did in that movie. I, I think it was a very good movie either. Um, I'm not angry about it because I, I don't really care about Star Wars that much. But this to me was like way worse. I mean, imagine if we got like a new Star Wars movie after like you know two decades, and it had like a, 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 a you know a five hundred thousand dollar budget, and mm-hmm. it, it was like the CG looked like this, and like even the mm-hmm. lightsabers looked kind of like two D, and <laughs> you know. And like okay, yeah. you had you had your trio back. You had you had like you know Carrie Fisher. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, assuming this would be like you know Force Awakens before she died, and yeah. you had Mark Hamill, and you had Harrison Ford. But all the new cast members were these horrible actors, and they had no <laughs> characterization. And there's not really an ending, and it kind of implies that maybe all this didn't happen. Like, yeah. like just imagine the outrage at that. Like just just yeah. imagine that. And I'm not outraged here. Like I, I, this is not something where I get angry at people who made it. I just wish it never happened. Like I'm not like. You know, it's almost worse where it's like, you know, sometimes w- when you mess up and you kind of want someone to be angry, but instead they're like, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Yes. That's like what it feels like. Well, like oh. I, I think that's how a sensible person reacts to this, but obviously I think yeah. Star Wars fans, not all Star Wars fans, but they're the ones who are vocal and angry and writing manifestos mm-hmm. about how much they hate Kathleen Kennedy and oh. stuff. <laughs> Like, you mean after this, you didn't go to uh, Chunk's Instagram and <laughs> try to get him to quit social media? No, no, I did not, because I am a sensible human being who does not blame one person. Uh, and even if there is one person to blame for a bad movie, like, say, a director, uh, yeah. I'm still not going to attack them. They made a movie I didn't like. That's not a crime. Let it go. Because mm-hmm. there's this, this sense of entitlement with some people where it's like, no, we're old good movies. We're old Star Wars movies that appeal to us. Yeah, I... <sighs> And like I, I, I don't know what the hell that honking is. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. He's looking um, for the he... six deck special edition of, uh, <laughs> of what movie were we talking about earlier? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember. But I uh, remember. <laughs> the like uh, I was looking through like a little bit of that. Oh, crazy Star Wars, because we we're talking about burning and shitting on oh, yeah, yeah. products. But, That's what it was. That I, I don't know what you call it, the manifesto or. Uh, whatever the thing that those nerds put out which by the way uh it, whoever wrote that y- you are a crazy person like, yeah. uh, I, th- I think the, the exact thing i'd call it is the declaration of and then what do we call it declaration of of uh, <laughs> <laughs> of uh, pathetic star wars fans i don't yeah, know that sounds about right but yeah like some of the stuff like i was looking at it it just sounds like so like pathetic like where they're saying like oh we promise like we'll buy merchandise if you make good movies like you know like we promise like we'll pledge our dollars and and do this and support this and stuff and it's just like uh, oh, I, like shut up <laughs> i get that the internet has like grown since the prequels but where was this during the prequels like because as much yeah. as i think uh last year that was a bit of a mess and i thought rogue one was a mess neither of them were as bad as any of those three prequels i don't know yeah, definitely agree with that. And then what's so funny is uh, whenever I hear people talk about the prequels, everyone kind of has like, or at least most people that I've talked to or have heard, you know, tell stories about it. Everyone has this kind of weird thing where like when Phantom Menace came out for like the first like week or so, everyone kind of loved it. Like it wasn't, I guess it was just because it's Maybe it'd been so long since we'd had Star Wars and so long since, like... You try to convince yourself you like it, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, well, like, yeah. like I, I, I guess nowadays, like, maybe you don't get that kind of stuff because we're so used to having so much entertainment and remakes and reboots that it's like, you know, maybe it wasn't as common then. But yeah, every, there was this weird thing where, like, after you see it, you're like, I guess that was good. <laughs> but obviously, like, looking back at it now, it's like, oh, no, it's horrible, but... And then you get your, uh, your Revenge of the Sith Defenders who think that, oh no, there's one good movie in the trilogy. No, there's not. It's still terrible. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, maybe, like, there are parts of it that are, like, enjoyable a it little bit, the least, but... the, the least worse. Sure. The three, yeah. sure. But <laughs> does it make it good? Yeah. Attack of the Clones is the worst thing ever. I'm sorry. It's the most boring experience of my life. Um... <laughs> I, I love Star Wars, but yeah, I can't really defend attack pretty much the, anything uh, on those prequels <laughs> attack of the boredom more like um but even with that though like again like I, I think i've heard people say like oh well you gotta redo the prequels now it's like no like just i don't like it but again just leave it alone it exists you know we have to deal with it but you know whatever it, it's oh, yeah. fine like it, everyone just feels like no like everything has to be perfect like, it's funny 
I wasn't expecting to go on like so much of a tangent here. This this review talking about like you know franchises <laughs> coming back and specifically Star Wars and the reaction to the Last Jedi and how that fan base is kind of treating it. And obviously that one's a bit more uh, uh, again mixed because there is people who love that movie. It's very divisive in that sense. Whereas this, I feel like most people just hate it because it's not good. It's terrible. Um, but I, I guess the reason why we're bringing this up is because we're trying to make this clear that we're not we're not trying to like be mad at the people who made this and be like no sure. you should have done better like no you should just not bother but it's just like we didn't, we didn't need yeah. another one it, i mean obviously the way four ended we, we i mean when i originally saw it yeah i would have liked a new sequel and like something to like yeah. wrap it up and like end the series but i think so much time passed that we got a really mediocre uh, movie if not well, mediocre has actually been too kind it's, it's bad yeah and yeah it's, <laughs> like it's, it's, i don't know like well, what this kind of feels like is it doesn't really feel like something that was, you know, really like well thought out. Like it seems like probably for a long time they were like, yeah, maybe we should do another movie. And, and maybe they even like had some like stuff filmed because I don't know, there, there are scenes where like some people look older than, you mm. know, like uh, in some scenes and stuff. So I don't know if maybe they're like, oh, we have some footage that we could use and maybe put together. Then like, oh, we have these ideas. And it, it just feels like, a big hodgepodge though of like a lot of different stuff that doesn't come together at all that yeah you just yeah even, yeah even i hate to say it but because four was a bit of a hodgepodge because it had all those deleted scenes from one yeah you know because even that had like some of that kind of going for it yeah and and again that like that's not like a great movie like i think it is still enjoyable and you can watch it uh, and have some fun with it but like it, it is like a weird mix of stuff but i do feel like they made it work as best as they could this it feels like maybe they were trying to make stuff work, but I don't think anything does, unfortunately. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't. Uh, it's, it's it's really rough. I, I well, we'll have to sort of say, like, <laughs> I, it's. I mean, you, you've got a bad script. You got a lot of bad acting. Um, mm -hmm. it, that's the thing. It's not like the main actors have even ever been that great. Like, you know, Reggie's not the best actor in the world. He's just kind of cheesy, sure. and he, he works what yeah. he does. Uh, makes you know, like, barely okay. It's fine. Like, yeah. He's really not even in it that much. Not really, like, no. Um, but the, 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 all the other actors are all terrible, and then you get a terrible <laughs> script, you get terrible visual effects. The, the, the... I'd say the, the best actor is probably uh, Angus, uh, but uh, again, oh, like, sure, yeah. he's barely in it. Which and, and also, it's just like, yeah, it just makes me sad that it's like, ah, uh, like, you know, <laughs> he's so great in these movies, and then just knowing, like, this is, like, the last one and with yeah. him and stuff. I feel like, like, it, it does, it, I don't want to say it's exploitative, but like having him be in this, like you know, you know, his soul, you know, he was in his eighties, yeah. uh, you know, doing this, and I just help, kind of help you feel like you know, if he wasn't I, if he wasn't healthy enough to actually walk around, then maybe yeah. you shouldn't have had him in the movie. Oh no, yeah, certainly. Like if I mean, if anything, like uh, I, I hope that it was something where like he was really gung-ho about it and oh, was, sure, like, no, yeah. like i, I want to be in it like i hope it, it wasn't them being like oh come on like you gotta do it the fans will love it and that he's just like oh i okay, guess because I, guess. Like, yeah. I mean obviously there was a lot of actors in the new twin peaks that passed away in fact there was one who oh. the log lady specifically who was, oh, yeah. was was actually dying when like they were doing it and uh, but oh, yeah I, but it was well known that she loved Twin Peaks and she wanted to be involved. And she, she like, no, I, I need to be in this in some capacity. And, you know, they, they sort of, like, you know, crafted her scenes, like, you know, yeah. in a way that, you know, it was just her sitting there like, on a phone. But, like, they made it work. But knowing that she's the one who really wanted to do it, like, doesn't make it feel yeah. bad. It's like, no, that's fine. And it, it, yeah. and it works. And they, they use it in there. And, and then there was some surprise deaths as well. Like Miguel Ferreira, who's in the show, like, <sighs> he, he just died, like, uh, last year, you know, before it aired. And, that came out of nowhere and he, he seems yeah, so healthy too soon in the, in yeah. the movie uh, in the in the season you know when we watched it uh it was almost like a like a little gift to us that we, we got so much of because he's in that he's in a lot of that show that final season oh, yeah, de yeah definitely yeah i definitely feel lucky uh to get as much of him as we did but yeah man that is a dude that i i feel like i, I don't know i i hope uh like more people will you know come to yeah, you because know, I feel like he wasn't like a super well-known actor. Like people that knew him like loved him, but uh, I hope um, yeah, it's definitely something where like you know more people like discover Twin Peaks or something and like uh, yeah, you know, discover Peaks. him and stuff because yeah. he, he's just so good in it. Robocop, of course, was a big thing. I, that's what I knew oh, yeah. him from before I got to Twin Peaks. Like I knew him from Robocop. He's he's always been the guy from Robocop to me. But sure. 
you know. So, yeah, uh, Phantasm on Rabbit Show is kind of a depressing experience. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's this sort of thing where it feels sad and it feels like they, they just it, pulled this together and... Yeah. And that is kind of like, that is kind of weird because, yeah, like, I feel like other movies that are bad, they make you, like, angry, but yeah, like, this, yeah, it just makes you sad. It makes you sad that this is what it's become because it, it feels like... It wasn't like right after four they wrote another script and it just ended up being a terrible movie because they'd be like, oh damn, they're going downhill. With this one, it just feels like, oh, we're, we're forcing this out years later because people have been expecting a fifth one and yeah. it, it just, it's a, it's a pale imitation of what it once was. Uh, and even then, it's barely an imitation. It's it's just this own little, yeah. you know, Z-grade movie that doesn't really like, uh, fit with it. I mean, honestly, like, would you even really call this a horror movie? Like... I don't know, like, it's, it seems like it's pretty, like, far from it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you call it. I, yeah. It, it's just a shame. And it's... I, I, I don't want to, like, to, like, say that nothing can come back, because obviously we've given examples sure. where things can come back, and it can be yeah. good. Uh, but I, I think much, you know, if we're comparing it against Star Wars and, um, even the new Jurassic Parks and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I think maybe what they should have done with this is kind of what you said earlier, is this maybe should have been a transition to, a, like, these should have been the supporting characters and we should have had new main mm-hmm. characters who were the, the focus. Yeah. All right. Uh, or even do, do something cool. Like, like, they always implied that Mike was becoming the new tall man. Actually, just have him be the tall man. Actually, you know what? That would actually be really cool. I, I, w- I would be down with that. I like that, that could, idea. Because now he's in, he's like in his 50s or whatever, and he's the perfect mm-hmm. kind of like age and kind of... He's, he's actually kind of a tall guy as well, funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, like have <laughs> yeah, him like get him in the man. suit and stuff. Yeah. And, like, yeah. That, that could actually that. work really well. Like, have like the opening scene be like like him like killing Reggie or something. Like you still get Reggie in it, but it's like, you know, this kind of like passing of yeah, the like... Yeah, and it, like have, yeah. have like if you want to have, have Angus Shrimp have a cameo, have him watch this happen, have him smile and then fade away, and he's passed yeah. on the you know the, the, his power Ooh. to Mike, <laughs> and now Mike is a tall man. Like oh, I'm actually liking this a lot. Like I'm thinking about it and I'm like this, yeah yeah this is what I would have and, wanted. And you have new movie. characters, and you would maybe return to a smaller film at like the first one, and you have like a, a teenage character kind of like Mike. Maybe, maybe like, you know you yeah. like maybe have sisters this time or something, something a little bit different that maybe shakes up and. Yeah, I'd be totally down for that. You know, and you play like this, and you have your 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 kind of I don't know. I'm just I'm thinking of ideas, and I mean, I just thought of this on the spot over the last like two minutes, and I feel like I would rather have watched that movie. <laughs> no, a thousand percent. I'm actually like where where we're going with this here, and yeah, I wonder really how much like it, you know if you can think of something like that easily, like it makes you wonder like uh, how much like time and effort did they really put into like you know making this story? Or I mean, honestly, like if you know, if Cascarelli, like, really wasn't even that involved, like, it almost makes me wonder, like, uh, did this, like, Hartman, did he have, like, an idea for maybe another type of movie, and then, you know, got, like, kind of roped into, like, Cascarelli and be like, hey, maybe we can... Has he been attached to the franchise before? Like, is this just him coming in, or is he actually someone who's been, like, you know, involved with uh, the other stuff? I I don't know. I... They might have mentioned something about it at the Q and A, but again, it's been like a couple well, of years at this point. So the first remember. thing he ever worked on was in two thousand, according to IMDb. So probably not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that was after the last movie. Uh, so no, he doesn't seem to have any, had much attachment, right. uh, and any professional capacity anyway um, from before then. So it's it's really rough. I. Yeah, there's so many other things you could have done. I, I think maybe they, they just wanted to stay in the past. They like, oh no, this has to be a bit red. You're going around with these quadruple barrel shotgun. And I love that in yeah. two and three, but we're done with that. Yeah. We really are. Like, we can't just keep going back to that. Um, yeah. We have to do something different. Um, <sighs> yeah. So, you know, it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, this is, this is the, the, the tone that we have to have in this review, but this is where we yeah. are, so... Um, oh boy! Is there any other like sort of scenes or ideas you want to talk about before we get to the ratings? Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny because like I feel like we didn't really go too in depth in like a lot of the scenes, but when Actually, you think about it, like there isn't really that much that goes on. Like, yeah, there's not that much depth, and honestly, because it ju- it jumps around so much, like I can't yeah. really keep the order of the scenes straight in my head. And I only watched this yesterday. Yeah. This was not a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I. 
Like, you know, there's some scenes where they, they put Reggie in a mausoleum running from balls. Oh, sure. oh we didn't even mention uh, the return of the... I'm not sure if she has a specific name, but, like, the woman that the oh, tall yeah. man turns into in the first one I comes back. I believe she is credited as the Lady in Lavender. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and I, I believe it's the same actress from the first movie yes. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, who, 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 who funnily enough actually despite the fact that i've not seen her since the very first movie from 1979 she's actually aged better than most of the yeah. other cast <laughs> she looks a lot better yeah than most people most of them um i mean maybe there's some trickery going on there but it's fine like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah like, this, this really should have had some new blood as the as the main cast as the main two or three characters and then we we could have you know went out from there like that's really what they yeah. should have done i think but definitely um, but yeah, it's kind of sad. It's kind of <sighs> pathetic. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's just a depressing... As a Phantasm fan, this was a depressing watch. Honestly, like, this is my second time watching it. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. Like, I don't... I, like, don't, think, even, I don't think I will. Like, I always... I mean, as I get older, like, I have less and less time to rewatch stuff. But, like, with, with you know, a lot of, like, the franchise movies, like, even when I think of, like, the Nightmares and the Fridays and the Halloweens, like, even, like, the bad ones, I'm like, well, I'm sure I'll watch this again someday, because at some point, I'll have a marathon, I'll want to watch something cheesy, I'll want to make fun of something with friends, or, you know, or I'll just feel like watching this series, and, yeah, I just, I can't imagine ever really having, like, uh, the desire for this. It's not like me to have, like, a helicopter or something going over but there it is <laughs> i don't know if I how audible that was maybe it was just maybe it wasn't as bad in the mic but <laughs> I, i'm i'm actually going insane there's uh some youths uh sounds like they're dribbling a basketball outside and it's kind of <laughs> driving me crazy i actually can't hear it so let's let's go okay, no, it's not yeah, I, I figured it's probably not that loud but i i can hear it unfortunately some youths. <sighs> i'll be gone soon just a few more months <laughs> i'll be out of here so yeah, uh, I guess I guess we'll rate the film then. Um, it's, it's it's a rough one. Uh, yeah. What would you give it out of ten, Tim? Um, obviously I'm going pretty low, but I still feel like this is kind of be going to be generous. But I think I'm going to give it like a three. <laughs> and I don't know, just like there really isn't like much here. But again, like I mean, seeing Reggie and seeing the tall man, like as as sad as it might kind of be that it's in this movie, like there's still like a little bit of me that's like, I do like these characters. Uh, and, you know, there's a few moments like, you, you know, again, like, you know, some of the stuff in the beginning where like Reggie has like, maybe like some funny lines or whatever that I'm yeah. like, okay, okay, whatever. So I'm actually going to yeah. agree and give it a three. It gets one point for some of the Reggie stuff at the start, which even though it's kind of bad, it's, it's, it's kind of like, okay, if the whole movie had been this, like it could have been at least yeah. kind of amusing. Uh, it gets two points for the score because the music still sounds quite good. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I really like that means uh, I really like the score. So, uh, but that's it. That's all it gets. It gets a three out of ten. Uh, it's really depressing. Um, I really wish that um, we got a more definitive ending, either at the end of three or the end of four. So I I could just like I'm never going to watch this again. But it's going to be frustrated at the end of four when I'm like, this is kind of a cliffhanger and there's yeah. another movie, but. <laughs> uh who knows i mean i, I again at, at this point like i you know we, we talk a lot about just like letting stuff die or whatever but like i mean if they do ever you know want to do like a reboot or something like again with you know like we we're talking about with new characters or something i you know might be a little more uh excited uh, again but yeah other than that like i think just you know leave this uh franchise where it is but i mean like four you know watchable movies out of five and with you know like you know two of those movies being really good and then another two being like you know decent enough watches like yeah that's not bad that's you know still pretty good score yeah uh it's just a shame it's all downhill it's, it's, it's always a decline whereas at least with some other franchises it's like oh it's up and down up and down you end in a high note so fine we can leave now let's, let's stop there <laughs> now I'd, i mean uh, all right since since this is the end of the franchise like i, mm -hmm. I don't think that <laughs> it's going to be a big surprise, like, what our orders would be, but do we oh, want to sure. give, like, our orders for favorites? All right, well, I mean, I kind of said it there, but one's best, then two, then three, then four, then five. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. <laughs> um, which is kind of annoying, because it means it was all downhill, but... Yeah. 
I mean, at least uh, at some points the drop off isn't that big. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Had this been like a six, which would have been kind of disappointing, but still kind of maybe enjoyable enough to watch. It's like, okay, yeah. it's all downhill, but it ended in a relatively reasonable place. Uh, it sure. didn't know. Yeah. It fell off a cliff. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there you go. That is Phantasm Ravager. Uh, depressing to say the least, but it's over now. So, we finished the franchise. That's good. Uh, we're not going to replace it with anything because we still have three more that we're working through. We're still mm. working our way through Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and. Um, Howling. Howling, thank you. Uh, how could I forget Howling 5, which we did recently? <laughs> um, so, now there's a movie that <laughs> lives up to the hype. <laughs> So we're going to like finish those off before we start any other big franchises. Um, uh, the hope is that we might even be able to finish these for October and then start the new franchises in, in the October thon, uh, which we do. So that, that's the hope. That's the hope. So we, we might hit that, we might not. It kind of depends. The schedules and certain weddings get in the way. So inconsiderate of Tim <laughs> to not think of the show uh, when he popped the question. How dare he? Um, but I kid. I kid. Uh, I am looking uh, forward to the yeah. episode though we record when Tim's on his honeymoon. I'm looking forward to that episode. <laughs> Special honeymoon edition of Screams After Midnight. Uh, I mean, <laughs> dude, there's, there's so much stuff that uh, I'm missing. <laughs> they're like, they're doing a big, uh, uh, like, was it 40th uh, anniversary of Halloween? Uh, yeah. They they have like a big like convention thing that they're doing in Pasadena that's like, I don't think I'm going to be able to make that. Yeah, like, that sucks. Damn it. <laughs> I, I, I mean, if anyone's worried, don't worry. Like, Tim is back before the big new movies of Halloween come out. So the Halloween movie and, you know, whatever, like, we'll have them done. Uh, the first half of the month where he's gone, uh, we're going to have content in advance so that there's still streams going out. So you shouldn't actually get the effect of it too much. <laughs> but... Uh, that's the plan. Uh, so that that is uh, that has been screams after that has that has been Phantasm yeah. Five. Let us know. Um, oh, oh no, I just uh, I don't think it's gonna be as much as last year, but that's only because like oh, we yeah. freaking killed ourselves last year. Like La- last year we put in time. Last year we were doing five movies a week plus the countdown. There was six. And we didn't. <laughs> yeah, and like we didn't even like start early. Like or, no, we didn't. No, we, we, yeah. we just did. <laughs> We did six videos a week for four weeks. We we mm-hmm. just about killed ourselves. That is not going to happen this yeah. year because um, <laughs> Tim's getting married <laughs> and he's not going to be here. Uh, but we're going to have even as much... if I wasn't, I would be like, we we're yeah, cutting that we, down we like four. Too many. <laughs> yeah, we're cutting that down a little bit. Um, that's that is that is actually fair. Uh, but we'll we'll get as many as we can. Hopefully, we still maybe hit like three a week or something like that. But uh, it'll be whatever it is. But however we think... can fit in before, we'll have ready. Uh, I think at the very bare, barest of minimums, well, we should be able to at least do two a week, which right now, yeah, we're only doing about one or so a week, so that's at least a little more for you, but yeah, we'll probably shoot yeah. for three. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll shoot for the moon. We'll shoot for the moon and see what we, see what we can do. Um, and hopefully Tim comes back from his honeymoon being all like, you know what? I, I need, I, I <laughs> I need to watch horror, horror movies. I need to watch <laughs> horror movies. We need to do like ten movies in the next five days, and it'll just about kill me. But maybe it'll, it'll be, the, the 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 absence will make the heart grow fonder. True. <laughs> anyway, you actually jumped in when I was doing my outro, so uh, that has been Phantasm Five. Let, let us know what you do think of the movie in the comments <laughs> if you've seen it. Uh, like and subscribe, all that stuff that supports us. What supports us even more than that, though, if you can, is to go over to patreoncom slash TV and you get a bunch of boys. You get to vote in a movie every month for streams, as well as other sh- movie shows that we do, like One One Twenty One in Flux and Gigawatts. Uh, well, actually, not Jigawatts, Overload. Uh, Jigawatts is the new movies. You don't get to vote on those because those are new and they just happen and things come out. Um, and you get to do that stuff. You get to add movies to The Crypt, uh, which is like a to-do list of movies for streams. Um, and we're always trying to think of new things, like new perks to put into the Patreon for streams. Mm-hmm. If you if you could, if you want to suggest things in the comments, but, I mean, we won't necessarily take them because we might think, oh, no, that's impossible. But there's no harm in suggesting things and maybe mm-hmm. something will spark some inspiration and we'll think of a nice little bonus or something. Um, mm-hmm. that we can we can add to the patrons and stuff. Um, because I'd love to put something in the one dollar tier for the streams fans. You know, if, if, that's, if that's all they, they like, you know, if that's all they can give is the one dollar, and that's that's great. It'd be nice to give them a little streams thing for it. I just don't know what mm-hmm. it would be. I have no idea. And Tim's not very smart, so he just not thought of anything yet. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Professor. I'm a sport. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the one dollar tier, you can enroll in my <laughs> class. I don't know. I'll set up an online class. 
<laughs> we'll record like a, a 15 second like, clip a week of Tim just like saying a lesson in horror. <laughs> this week, class, always remember that you must have at least pairs of, three pairs of boobs before the end of a slasher film, or it's just no good. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is today's class. <laughs> we'll see you next time. You must always have at least one three boobed woman <laughs> in your movie. What, so only Total Recall succeeded in that capacity? Yeah, I feel like there has to be more than that, There's, right? probably, there's probably been a couple of really bad movies like that went yeah. straight to VHS that had that, but yeah. It's the only one I can name, so there you go. Uh, that has been screwed. So thank you once again for watching or listening, and we always appreciate it. We love you loads. Keep watching scary movies, guys, and we will see you next time.